Hi, I'm Brittany Lung, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Today we're headed out west to Falcon, Colorado, and 13-year-old Lucas Oil, now 600 micro sprint driver, Kobe Sokol. Kobe, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Brittany, and yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. Colby, could you give us a little background on your racing career? I started racing Corvids when I was five years old, and last year I closed out my Corvids career. And in those years, I have many track records, five winter national wins, six QMA Grand National wins, several USAC national wins, several USAC national top five point series finishes, and one USAC national championship. I started my dirt career, I, my biggest accomplishment so far in that is my almost winning my first ever dirt race at the Tulsa Shootout. That sounds very impressive. You are currently running non-restricted 600 micro sprints. Can you tell us a little bit about those cars? Well, non-restricted 600 micro sprints are miniaturized sprint cars and they run on 600cc motorcycle engines. Now, I know you mentioned dirt racing. This has been your first year racing on dirt. How would you compare that to racing on pavement? Well, on pavement, you have to be super smooth and consistent with how you run your race. But here on dirt, the track is so consistently changing, you have to adapt to every lap. Now that you've done both, what's your favorite? I, I love racing on dirt. I've enjoyed every time just going out there on the racetrack. The track is so consistently changing. I love that you have to adapt to every lap to it. And it's, it's just such a challenge. I, I love racing on it. At the beginning of the year, you competed at the Tulsa Shootout, and I think it's safe to say that you surprised everyone in attendance by placing second in the A-Main. Have you had time for it to sink in with what you really accomplished there? Well, yeah, yes, I've had the whole year to let that sink into me. It's just one of those things, you go into that race and you just don't know what you're gonna come out with, and I was just hoping to come out with winning a lot, but you can't go wrong with almost winning your first ever golden driller at your first ever dirt race. I also understand that you are doing some simulator training with IndyCar driver Robbie Unser. So how cool is that? Well, it's so cool. In my town, he's a legend because he raced the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, and we actually have a poster of him in our garage, but it's just so cool that I'm actually learning from him because he's just such a legend in our town. It's, it's, it's awesome. What a great experience. I know you have a special relationship with your younger brother, Justice, and have raced with him and now against him. How is that working out for the two of you? Well, we've actually been doing it ever since we started racing court midgets, and we've raced and against each other and with each other. It's just been it's just been so fun. We were so competitive against each other, but when we go on the racetrack, we're brothers, but in our minds, we're competitors. Absolutely. The two of you now have your very own podcast called So Cool Brothers Podcast. Where do you see that going over the next year? Well, I see it continuing to grow. All of our fans and supporters out there just keep pushing and motivating us to keep doing these over and over again. Me and, brother, me and my brother just absolutely love doing them. You guys are pretty good at it, too. I've watched them myself. Thank you. I know that people refer to you and your team as the Red Army. Where did that name come from? Well, the name came from when we first started racing cord widgets, I was able to choose what color our race cars were. My favorite color was red, so I chose red, and all of our cars ended up being red, and all of our team shirts ended up being red. So one day, one person decided to call us the Red Army because of all the red. Seeing that you not only drive the cars, but work on them as well, can you walk us through a typical week at the Sokol House? Well, first when we come back from the racetrack, we'll debrief, we'll talk about the race cars, if there's anything we could have done better, or how the track was, or what we liked or didn't like about the race cars, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and hopefully Andrew or my dad will fix it. Then we'll clean the race cars, inspect them, make sure everything's okay, if there's anything that needs to be fixed or repaired, then we'll do that. During that time, me and my brother will we'll do some schoolwork, because schoolwork is most important. If we don't have any good grades or anything like that, then we can't go racing. Uh, we'll fit some racing in there if we need to research about the racetrack we're going to. Then we'll definitely do that, and then we'll set up the race cars and head to the racetrack. You guys sound very dedicated to school and racing. Yes. What is your most memorable race? Well, Brittany, I actually have two. And one of them is on pavement, and that was the 2017 Phoenix USAC National Copper Cup race, I went, where I won four out of my five races which were in the same day, which was awesome. And now that I race, now that I started my dirt career, my most memorable race is almost winning my first ever golden dealer of my first ever dirt race. Now, is there a race you'd like to forget about? 
Well, I've learned from my good races and I've learned from my bad races, so I can't really say I'd like to forget any of them. You finished the year off in second place in the now 600 mile high region championship. How satisfying is that for you? Well, that was so satisfying. I just went to the year. I was just hoping to come out with maybe a top five or top 10 finish, but you can't go wrong with getting second in your first ever dirt year. Absolutely. Rob told me that you and your team are now starting to get ready for the 2020 Tulsa shootout. What will you need to do to get ready for that race? Well, first off, we'll strip the cars down to pretty much bare frame, go through everything, make sure that everything's okay. If we need to repair or fix anything, then we'll do that. I'm actually getting a brand new Yosha mirror motor, which I'm super excited for. And then during that time period, we'll put the cars back together. Me and my brother will do some schoolwork because, again, that's number one if we don't have any good grades and we can't go racing. We'll do, we'll stay, we'll do some eye racing to stay on top of the game. Then we'll just research about the race racetrack if we need to, and then we'll just prepare ourselves. And, and we'll set up the race cars and head off to Tulsa. Now, how many cars will show up for that event? I'm not sure on how many total cars are going to show up, but right now there's over 500 cars entered. Wow. You are given the nickname Little Smoke. Where did that come from? Well, the nickname Smoke came from was when I, it dates back to my first ever quarter major races to one one of the first I ever won. And I come up the race shack and my papa says to me, Smoke. And I go, why do you call me that? And he goes, well, you smoked your competitors out there on that racetrack. But then how I got Little Smoke was at our USAC national event races. The announcer started calling me Little Smoke, and that stuck with me ever since. Colby, what do you do when you're not racing? When I'm not racing, I'll just, again, schoolwork. That's the most important. I'll make sure I get all my schoolwork done. I've, all my grades are written, everything like that. I'll do some eye racing. I'll just think about racing. I'll research about the track, but, tracks if I need to, and I'll just be a regular 13-year-old boy. You just got a new dog. What kind of dog is he and what is his name? Well, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but he's a Shih Tzu and his name is Racer and we love him to death. That's awesome. I got to see him before and he was pretty stinking adorable. You just got back from a trip with your school to Washington, D.C. Tell us some of the favorite things that you did that you got to do while you were there. Well, my entire trip was my favorite. I got to learn and see about so many cool memorials and monuments learn about our U.S. history and our U U.S. government. Most importantly, learn about why our people cared and fought so hard for what they did. And I'm just so proud to be an American. Awesome lessons to learn. Well, we're about out of time. Would you like to give a shout out to your sponsors? Well, yes. I mean, there's so many great sponsors and supporters that help us get just do racing in general. And we, here's just to name a few. Rainbow Sprinkler, Peak View Plumbing, Advanced Racing Suspensions, Angler Machine and Tool, Yoshimura, EMI, Speedway, and Stollard. Colby, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Brittany. Well, there you have it. What an amazing story from one of the young rising stars in motorsports. To learn more about Colby, check him out at ColbySokolRacing.com. Follow him on social media. Don't forget, if you want to catch up on any of the Race Face Spotlight shows, you can do so at raceface.tv on demand. Until next time, I'm Brittany Lung. Thanks for watching.